Hey, everybody, it's still the Drive to School podcast. I'm still Pastor Goodman, and Paige is back again. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing awesome. So last time we were talking about judging, and we should do that some more. I, I don't know if we entirely finished, right? No, we were um, about halfway through. We are talking about um, judging in the world now. Yeah. So this is this is sort of one of those, those conundrums, because the God who says, don't judge, um, also promises to return one day as judge and also gives us judges um so so what's what's the deal here i mean judging isn't all bad because they're obviously god calls people to a vocation of judge and we have a whole book in the old testament called judges judges. yeah but just because you're a judge doesn't mean that you're perfect it doesn't it you're there to help guide the children of God in in the Old Testament cases and with New Testament stuff but um it's more like they're the overseers and protector of God's people on earth with the guiding um of like the Ten Commandments and God's word and they're just kind of here to protect Right. So, so there are kind of two kingdoms, right? There, there's the kingdom of the sword and the kingdom of the spirit. There's, there's uh, in America, we say church and state, and it's not quite the same thing, but it, it's sort of the idea that God actually cares about how things work in the rest of the world too, not just that your sins are forgiven. And so like um, in, uh, I want to say it's James, uh, he'll say, look, if your neighbor is starving in the street and you just tell him your sins are forgiven and leave, that's, that's not loving your neighbor. Um, and, and in the same way, um, if we just sort of say, well, everybody's sins are forgiven because because Jesus died for them. Now the strongest is in charge. Well, the least of these that Jesus cares about so much keep getting trampled on. What do we, what do we do with that? Here God gives us judges to actually say, nah, there, there is right and there is wrong. There are people who should be punished, not because they need to go to hell, but because we don't want to see the least of these hurt, right? Right. And like as deaconesses, we're called to mercy work. We're called to action. We're not called just to say, hey, everything, your sins are forgiven. Everything's going to be good. I'm going to go tell that to somebody else now. Like we stay with that person. We help them. We care for God's children. And it's just, it's not really a good judge. Like if you're just coming and saying, oh, it'll all be okay and then leave like that's kind of missing the point right there there are people who who quite frankly they should be locked up it's because it's not safe to have them in, in society and it's not good and it's not a question of their salvation murderers can be saved um faith in christ justifies it is the forgiveness of sins because jesus died both for the murdered and and the murderer uh but at the same time wouldn't it be great if we had a, a society that was safe for you to go outside and not have to worry about getting murdered? Wouldn't it be safe if we could go to church on Sunday and hear about this forgiveness of sins without having to worry about what might happen to us for doing it? Here, God appoints judges and says, order will be kept. And so this is Romans chapter 13, where he says, I'm going to give a sword to some people, not so they'll use it for themselves, but so that they would punish evil and reward good so that that society might be in, in good order. And, and that's a different thing than you judging at the side of the street, because is, well, what sins do you want to judge the most? Like, let, let's be real honest. I mean, just like personally? Yeah. Or uh, like when people steal things from people who like, you clearly can tell this person is in need, but apparently you need it more. So you're going to take it. Like, that's so rude. Like, right. That, Paige, know, do you do that? Like, um, I will confess that I have taken something that was not mine that from somebody who person, desperately needed it oh not so this desperately is... needed it but like a pencil during the sats is something that you probably oh, need so. <laughs> okay well Paige, your sins are forgiven you jesus died for you go in peace uh but but also we we get to these things that that have marked our lives these things that we are not unbiased about are the ones we want to judge the most right like the, right. i i've seen both sides of this or this hurt me specifically or my people specifically or somebody that that yeah the, the things that we are the least unbiased about are the things we want to judge the most and aren't judges supposed to be unbiased yeah this is why god appoints judges and not says everybody if who's particularly interested in a case you be judge of that um because well of course it's not going to be just at that point in time right because as soon as you bring your own like human wants and desires into the thing it's 
going to be skewed one way or the other and the other person has no hope at that point and the last thing you want to do is take away somebody's hope right and so when when god establishes judges um he puts we got to be honest sinners into this role and so they're not perfect but we try and set up a system where their their sins can be shielded from their their vocation and so like in in, in our court system if if a, a court of a uh, a trial has something to do with a judge or his family. He's supposed to recuse himself. He's he's biased here, and so it, we should get an unbiased one because what God gives us is right and wrong. What the law actually is should be the thing that determines, not how any person feels. And well, the people I want to judge the most are the people I have the strongest feelings about. Um, and, and so we want to sort of remove that part uh, because when when God returns as judge, and this might be the place to start because He's without sin, He'll be doing it right. When God returns on the last day as judge of the living and the dead, what's He going to say about you and me? Like He. When he returns as judge, like it's condemnation for those who do not believe and hope for all sinners. Like we're there and he's proclaiming that our sins have been forgiven, go in peace. Like you just proclaimed to me a while ago. And like it's just, it shouldn't, it's going, it, it, depending on who you are, it's going to be really scary, but um, it should bring that comfort as like, yes, he's come, I'm saved. Right, and I know this because of something that happened, because Jesus died for me, because he is risen from the dead. And so when when Jesus was dying for me, how did that feel for him? Not good. Okay, I don't want him to judge me based on that. I, I want him to judge me based on something something firm. He comes to, to judge with with both justice and mercy um and and so it's it's not simply then then what motivates him but um but also what has been accomplished he, he's died he is risen and it is his his all atoning death that declares us innocent on the last day uh well done thou good and faithful servant um when we come into this world we we don't get all of those things but we have the same god who gives it so this same god what does he want for us he wants us to be saved like there's no point what's the point in having children of god and like knowing that we're children of god and we're brothers and sisters in christ if there is no salvation in that like the tomb is empty for a reason like yeah. god yeah. came like jesus came he wrote he died and he rose that's the point he rose for us to have that mercy and forgiveness in the resurrection, in that salvation that he won for us that we cannot do for ourselves. That's the same God who gives us judges. And so when, when he does, it's it's actually supposed to be for good. Uh, the, the God who would give us judges in this world is, is the same God who actually wants to sort of recognize that I want society to be preserved i want the least of these to be cared for and you're right it can't happen perfect down here while everybody's sinning but ultimately it, it's not just to leave us here in, in this this broken system perpetually but it's to move us towards well, what you were just talking about that last great day when when we get to hear what the resurrection actually means yeah and that's a hopeful thing it shouldn't like for us christians we should hold no fear in that because we know through like i said the empty tomb like that's all covered. It's all, we've got this, like Jesus yeah. got this. Absolutely. And that, that also applies to then the people who, whose sins grieve us the most that lead us to wanting to judge. And this is what we're actually called to see. Jesus died for them too. So let's let his system address this. It's not that right and wrong cease to be right and wrong, but it's that sins can't cease to be forgiven either. And so we, we want to hang on to that as we go forward, because in, in all of this, if, if, the kingdom of heaven is simply by inherited by the least guilty. It won't be us. You have the log in your own eye, but instead take your sins to Jesus and then take your neighbor to Jesus too. Yep. His salvation is for everyone. It's not just for the people who think that they've got it all under control the best. So I love it. Paige, thanks so much. We, uh, it was great having you and uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon about something else. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good one. You too.